everyone today I'm working on this B23-7 uh, actually it's just a drive system so I bought this a little while back I was going to use it for a U25B because I have an extra shell and I can't because it has these extra ridges in the back of course uh, I could mill it but uh, just as easy to get a nice uh, B23-7 shell, which is just what I did. Got it directly from Atlas. It's undecorated, so I need to paint this. I'm going to paint this for, um, actually I was gonna do L and N because uh, Dave Strains likes to model the L and N so I, I was gonna do one, do one just for him. He's always been encouraging me, commenting on all my videos. So I wanted to return the favor and do a custom paint for uh, just to show him how easy LNN is. But as I looked at pictures of the B23-7, they came out uh, after the LNN was merged into the um, family lines. And I just happen to have some nice seaboard decals here. So I'm gonna paint it for seaboard. And that too was a very, very easy paint job. But before I uh, go to my engines, I need to do some practice. I just happen to have an old Backman caboose handy that I can practice on. So I don't have an LNN caboose. So this is going to be my practice uh, car. Um, do that if you're intimidated by custom painting your engine. Start with some freight cars. So we'll make, uh, we'll make use of that. I'm going to get some practice. At the same time, I'm going to make an LNN caboose. So I took the roof box off. I uh, spread it apart. I put some wheels on it and a coupler so now i can get to painting so here i am in my garage it's raining outside today but that won't keep me from doing good work so i'm just going to paint it with some silver that will give me a chance to make the colors blend you know the black of the roof there that might not come out so good so this is what you want to do, you want to just mist it over very gently, just uh, let, it, let the droplets accumulate until the droplets all touch each other. And uh, that's what you do, you want to get in there and have as little paint as you possibly can, but while still having a complete coverage by giving it very thin coats like this you don't waste uh, too much decals of course you could probably um, strip all the parts that might be good because you can reveal more, more detail that way but I find that even with um, a very small coat you don't disrupt too much of the detail so I give it about 10 minutes to dry now I'm gonna do my red I'll do it uh, off camera because I want to focus a hundred percent so Two very thin coats is better than one thick one. But I think that this one uh, very thin coat, I think that's going to give me enough. I think I'm going to be happy with this. So I'm going to give it about uh, 20 minutes to dry. After 25 minutes, uh, you can wait 15 or 20 or 25 minutes. You have the option of giving it a second coat but for me i'm happy with this so i'm gonna let this dry overnight 
So in fact, I waited uh, actually three days. If I can give you a little tip, once you've done your painting, usually you're so happy that you'll just go out and touch it. And that is usually the worst problem. You put fingerprints on it. So um, that is actually one of the tips that I can give you. Once you've completed your painting, leave it alone. Don't touch it. So I'm going to take my decals out. And this is obviously a decals for an engine. But I'm going to use it on my caboose. I'm going to use these little uh, LNMs for the logo. And then I'll pick a number and I'll take that out too. You don't need a ton of water to do decals. Just a couple of drops. A couple of drops will do. And then make sure it's stuck on there good. And then you can place it to where you're happy. And once you're happy with the placement, you can just give it a couple of minutes to dry. And that should look awesome. With the decals in their place, uh, that's it, you're done. Unless uh, you wanna do like me and put some dull coat because uh, my paint's very shiny, um, then it's, it's good, good enough. You can get uh, lots of practice like this, painting some freight cars and carouses. So I put the roof walk back on and I put the, uh, the underside of it. So there you go, brand new caboose for my layout. Now that I have a lot of practice at painting freight cars and cabooses, I can get to work, I can attack uh, painting the body. Now, I was going to paint it for l &M, but as I looked at some pictures, I saw that I could paint it for family lines or a seaboard system and have a really good engine. I could have something to, to show for my effort. So, there's not much to this packaging, but you have a very good body kit in there. Well worth uh, the extra effort. Of course, if you can find one painted already, it's a little bit simpler. But this actually, I paid about $20 for this. If you're getting one that's already been uh, painted, you have to remove the, uh, the windows for it. But this one, the windows aren't put in. If I were to paint it for family lines, I would only have to paint the short hood here uh, yellow. I'm going to separate these out to show you. So there's my cab. So I would only have to paint the short hood here a yellow. And the, the cab is going to do the demarcation here between the yellow and the gray and the walkways. So it's not that, uh, not that hard to do. The rest is exactly the same if you're doing an LNN or family lines, or like me, I happen to have decals for seaboard. So that's the way it's gonna go. You could paint the parts separately or paint them together. It's gonna work out to be about the same. I like painting them together. There, these fit in tight. And I'll put the radiator on top here. I don't know if there's a direction to this. 
Looks to be, yes, this little tab goes towards the front. So there's two tabs actually. I don't want to force it too much. They even include the couplers. That's super nice to have. And a little baggie of parts. Now, when before you get started on painting an engine, you really have to decide, um, get a good picture of the engine. And you have to decide which uh, unit number you're going to do. Because especially for um, seaboard systems, they, they all were a little bit different. So uh, I picked out a unit. 5128 is the unit I picked. And so the unit had stripes on the pilot. Uh, that one, 5128, it's got just a gray pilot with a black um, snow plow. So the snow plow's right here. And I have to put the sun chains and the um, smokestack. And what else they got? They got a horn in there. So uh, you could paint the horn and the brake wheel. You could paint them separately. But for me, I prefer to have them on the unit before I paint. They also give you a complete set of handrails. Now on the prototype, they're painted gray with the yellow safety rail. I think I'm gonna leave them black for end scale. I find that black makes the handrail appear uh, smaller so I'm gonna leave them black so I'm gonna add all the details and then I'm gonna be ready for painting now I'm almost ready to paint I just need to uh, wash this with some uh, dish soap and some water and then I can start painting I use the exact same technique that I did for the caboose. I started with just droplets and I let them touch and I put as little paint as possible. So notice how my, uh, my uh, grills came out. I still have a lot of detail on them. Some people paint the grills uh, black. I recommend you don't touch them. It makes the locomotive look uh, much more factory-like. Now I can go ahead uh, and install my decals. I picked a specific unit, so I have pictures and I know where to put my decals. 5128 is the unit that I've chosen. I'm going to continue doing this uh, off camera. Now I'm ready to bring in my decals. So these will just slide in like this. You want to leave uh, a lot of water with your decal because it will help you to slide them uh, once they're on your body shell. It will help you to slide them So now I'm just going to position it, position it to where I want it. Seaboard, just like LNN, it's pretty simple. The LNN, all you got to do is paint the nose yellow and then apply your decals. So I do have my picture close by. So I can tell exactly uh, where the decal should go. Just have to go just a little bit lower in the front there. There, now that looks awesome. I don't always use a microsol 
but this time uh, it felt necessary so I used a little bit with the decals finished it looks really cool so if it's your first job if it's your first paint job you're finished now but me I'm gonna go up one step further I'm going to do a coat of dull coat. Now with the dull coat, it looks much more professional. Now all that's left to do is put in my uh, windows and my handrails and my couplers. While I have the sill apart, I find it's the right time. I had to take it out apart to put the windows in. So I find that it's the right time to do couplers. A lot easier at this time so my shell looks really good with all the windows and all the handrails so now all that's left to do is drop it on the drive and now it's time to run some trains well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.